God, what a nightmare. Getting all this stuff out of the bag every time. Having it all tangled and all over the place. If only there was another way that we could do this easily. So we're going to be looking at this. This is a new um, desktop USB 3 to SATA hard disk docking station. Uh, it's from Fideco and we've we've got a couple of other of their products. Um, one of them is a cabled um, adapter that does IDE as well, but we're going to be having a look at this today to see how this can help us in the office. Ah, but what's this? Finally, um, we've got something that we can make use of. Um, so this is going to sit on the desk hopefully. So it is a USB 3 to SATA hard disk docking station and purportedly it'll take three and a half inch disks, two and a half inch disks, SSDs, uh, NVMe and M.2 drives. So this one particularly is an M SATA drive that's connected into a um, standard SATA interface. So we're going to have a look at this today and see what we get. So opening up the box, inside we get our power adapter. This is a, it says 0.8 amps, 2000 milliamp adapter. We get a USB 3 cable. So let's have a look at that. Check the quality out. Okay, so this looks fairly robust. It's a it's a good thick cable. Uh, got some flex to it as well, so it's not uh, it's not brittle. And as you can see here, the connector type is uh, one of the SATA three interfaces. Inside here, we've got uh, very very light, very fancy uh, adapter. So this is just plastic. On the back, we've got our 12 volt DC power input, a USB port, and then a power switch, on off switch. Underneath, there's nothing, so no serial number or anything. Um, we've, looks like we've got some lights around here. And then inside, we've got our two, well, we've got our single SATA connection down inside there, you can see it there. So with the flap up, that's a two and a half inch size. With the flap down, that's a three and a half inch size. So um, the only difference on this unit um, is it's got a single SATA connection and it takes both sizes of drives. Also in the box, we've got our user manual. So it can support up to an 18 terabyte drive at the moment, compatible with almost all two and a half and three and a half SATA SSDs and HDs and it's toolless basically. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get this connected and see what we think of it. Right, so let's get it connected. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our USB 3 cable and we're gonna pop that into the back of the unit. And we're gonna take our power supply, plug that into the wall, switch that on and then plug the other end into the back of the unit and then we can switch that on and you can see that we get a red light coming on here. Next we're going to take the other end of the uh, USB 3 cable, we're going to connect that into the PC like that and once you connect it in um, you get the blue lights on the bottom as well. Then we're going to take uh, the first drive we're going to take is a three and a half inch drive. So this one is a WD Blue. I believe it's a fresh copy of Windows 10 on there. But um, we're going to, with the uh, machine still enabled, because I want to test this to make sure that it picks it up when it's already powered on, we're just going to open the flap and slide that in and push that down until it goes in. And I can hear the drive spinning. And you can also see once you get activity on the disc, the two blue lights flash at the front. 
Let's go back to our system itself. Okay, so looking at the system itself, let's now open up our Windows Explorer. And we've got two drives here. We've got a system reserve drive, which will be nothing. And then we've got our data drive here, which is our Windows installation on that three and a half inch drive. And you can go in and navigate around without any problems at all. So that's the three and a half inch drive taken care of. Next, I'm going to leave it switched on. But um, the best practice is switch it off first of all and then take the drive out. But I want to test this to make sure that it can handle it OK. So I'm just going to pull out the three and a half inch drive. And then I'm going to take a, a different drive. I'm going to take this Seagate drive. This is a terabyte disk and I'm going to just slot that in there like that. And I can feel that spinning up straight away. I'm going to go back to our system. And there you can see Windows has detected the drive straight away. Let's go and have a look at it to make sure we can see everything on there. And there's our um, installation. There's our installation already on the disk. So let's move on now. Um, so that's our three and a half inch drives taken care of. Let's switch that off. Remove it. We've got a two and a half inch drive here. This is a this is a thin two and a half inch drive. So. This one again should just slot in like that. Uh, you've got a little bit of movement either side here, but because it is an ultra thin drive, uh, and then we're going to switch it back on. You get the red light coming on and the two blue lights because it's detected there's a drive in there, and then they'll start flashing once it does its reading. And again, let's go back to our Windows Explorer and have a look. And there's our system reserved and another fresh copy of Windows installation that you can. Do whatever you need to do with that. Okay, so that's the two and a half inch drive taken care of. Let's just remove that. Let's take our MSATA drive. This is a crucial M500 MSATA SSD drive. Um, so we're going to see if that will go in there. This one goes in this way around, but we're going to take that. You can see the slot in there. It's just going to pop that converter in there to see if we can read it. And again, we've left the, uh, we haven't done anything there. We've left the power switched on. So now let's go back to our system and have a look. And we can see our local drive here. Now, the reason that this isn't, uh, Windows isn't seeing it is because this MSATA drive is actually a Linux operating system on there. So this is running, that's uh, our old Linux server based on there. So that's not a particularly good test. So let's close this down. And we can see it in here if we go into our disk manager. So we can see that actually um, the raw or the, uh, the basic data partition is being picked up, um, but it is actually a Linux um, drive. So that's why that is showing uh, not correctly on Windows. So we'll close that down. We'll switch back to our top down view. We're going to remove that from here and then we're going to add. Let's. Uh, <clears throat> Let's pop our 500 gig blue drive back in here. And let's now go and see if we can find uh, a big file to write to it. Right, so we've got our um, Windows 11 installation ISO uh, copied to our local PC. So what we're going to do is going to connect, uh, copy that simply paste it onto our um, three and a half inch drive so i'm going to just do a right click and say paste so this is copying from the local pc uh, through to our um, three and a half inch drive that we've got connected and as you can see we've got a consistent write speed of around 80 megabits a second or megabytes a second so yep 80 between 80 and 84 megabytes a second OK, so that's that's that moved across. Um, the next thing I want to try is copying that same file to an SSD drive. So let's switch that off, remove our hard disk. And I've got here uh, an ADATA um, SU800 256 gig SSD. Uh, so I'm going to pop that into the drive holder, into the caddy. Make sure that that is plugged in properly, which it is. Switch that back on. Then we've got our lights and our disk activity flashing. 
and let's see if we can see the unit. It might take a little while because it's not formatted this drive. So let's go into our disk manager and have a look to see if we can see it there. And there we go. So we can see that it's picked it up, but we need to initialize it. So we're going to say, OK, we're going to initialize disk one. And then what we need to do is we need to give it a volume. So we're going to give it a simple volume, maximum size, give it a drive letter D, uh, format it with NTFS. That's fine. Say next and finish. And it should, we should see it pop up here once it's uh, finished its formatting. And there we go, that's our D drive. So let's close our disk manager and we're going to go back to our Windows 11 file that we copied over, the ISO image. And we're going to write that to our new SSD drive and see how long that takes. And again, you can see the difference in performance. So 84 megabytes a second against 300 megabytes a second on average. Um, you do get a slight drop off with uh, these drives. So you can see roughly uh, the first part of it was 300. The second part of it is 200, but that is so much faster with an SSD drive. Just goes to show why they are beneficial to have them in your system. Okay, so that's that's it. We can now remove, we're gonna switch off. We're now gonna remove our SSD drive. And then we're gonna unplug this and give you our final thoughts on it. So final thoughts, uh, it's very, very lightweight. It's good, seems fairly good quality. Uh, it is a plastic finish, but um, seems fairly well built. I like the fact that you've got the lights on the front, just gives it a, a little something a bit more flashy and um, different from, from everything else. Um, apart from that, we'll be leaving this on our desktop and making much better use of it rather than using the uh, the entwined cables in our bag. Obviously, we'll keep, that, keep our cables um, and the adapter that we've got there for when we go out to customer site, but certainly for the office, we'll be using this from now on. So that's it. So if you found that video useful, Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.